Many of you asked me how to calculate the seasonality to improve your forecast. So I created a new step-by-step -step tutorial in Excel. We're going to do the seasonality of Amazon, the bicycle sales in the US. I'm going to show you a secret Excel formula uh, that you're going to love. And we're going to talk about many examples that can really improve the way you forecast and the way you plan your business, your inventory, your sales, your finance, your HR to improve the performance of your company. So before going to Excel, why do we need seasonality? We need seasonality to allocate the right resources at the right time, right? So what are the resources? It could be money, uh, cash, to buy, for example, inventory, to recruit people for the right time for your warehouse, for your stores, for your factory, the right energy, like <laughs> it could be time, it could be also energy supply for your factory and the right communication at the right time. For example, if you have a peak of sales for Christmas, you need to have the right communication with marketing, and the operation and the supply chain at the right time to allocate the right resource. Otherwise, you're going to have overstock uh, before, you're going to have stock out during the peak and overstock again after. So my goal is really to help you by implementing the seasonality to improve your forecast and improve the performance overall of your company. Okay, so we have a lot of examples. I've been working in the in the spawning goods um, uh, business for a very long time. For example, this is the seasonality of the tents. You have a big peak for springtime before going on holidays and camping. I love camping myself. <laughs> so you do have a lot of seasonal factors like the weather, holidays, times, events such as the World Cup, cultural, even like the Saint Valentine, economic factors, or even just the planning of your factory that is closing every Sunday. So it's a seasonal factor that you should implement into your forecast. So for example, for the soccer ball, I was working uh, on the forecast of these products before, and you have a big peak every World Cup, every four years, except this one where the, the pandemic, so it was five years after, and it was quite sad for the French team uh, for the, the game against Argentina. I don't want to talk about it. Anyway, so if we go back to more examples, uh, we do have, for example, the forecast of, uh, this is not the sales of Amazon, Per quarter, and you can see that you have a peak every quarter of number four. At the end of this year, you have a big prime day for Amazon and you also have the Christmas peak, which is why you have this seasonality and at the same time, you have a very strong trend for this company. So when we talk about seasonality, we do have different temporality. Uh, finance could be per year, uh, for the sales per month, for the planning of your team per week, for the production planning per day, or even per hours for your warehouse picking or per minute if you provide energy or if you trade uh, per seconds. So for example, we do have the bicycle sales in the US. Uh, this is just one example of one uh, company and you can see that you have uh, the same cycle per month with a big peak during the pandemic. We're gonna get back to this specific seasonality in Excel just below that you can uh, download. This is the energy cycle consumption. You can see that we have a big peak in the winter time. You have a strong correlation per month, but also per hour, you can see that we have a big peak at the end of the day from 6 to, uh, to 10 p.m. and it's pretty low during the night. And you just wake up for, for the breakfast when you start having your croissant and your nice baguette with butter. <laughs> so at the end of the day, you need a good seasonality to have a better and more accurate forecast for your products, for your company, for your marketing, for your finance, for everything you have in your life. But at the end, the goal of the seasonality to have a better forecast accuracy, if you go back to statistical or time series forecast, you have the level, you have the trend if you are growing or not, and you have the seasonality. And that's what we're gonna talk right now to generate your more accurate forecast. All right, so now we're in Excel. I really recommend you to practice with me and then to use it with your own data of your company. Uh, we have a similar data set that the one I used to forecast with ChatGPT. You can check my other video uh, below. So what we're gonna do first, we need to detect, do we have a cycle? Do we have seasonality with Amazon revenue? You can see that there is a pattern. The first solution would be to have a graph and see if you have a repetition of a cycle. And yes, we can see there is one. There is also a secret Excel formula I can show you. And this is this formula. The download my Excel file to get it. It's forecast that ETS, that seasonality. And in that you have to put, I'm going to move that, the revenue on the first, the revenue, and then just an ID number from one to the end of your uh, series. Okay. Uh, by doing that, it will give you a number. It will give you an error if there is no seasonality pattern, but if there is a seasonality pattern, return the land of repetitive pattern, you see? So it's pretty cool. You can use it if you have a lot of data uh, to see if you have any, um, any pattern, any seasonality. In this case, we have four. That means that 
we, it looks like we have a repetition of a cycle every four periods. And this is one period is one quarter for this specific one. Okay, so now we know, great, we have a seasonality. So we need to have what is the average uh, share, what is the, the weight of every quarter in average, uh, whatever you are in 2010 or in 2030, right? So what we're going to do now, we're going to do the average of every revenue per quarter. And for that, we're going to go to insert pivot table existing worksheet. Do it with me. You can pause this video. Nice. I'm proud of you. We're going to do per quarter. Clack. Revenue. Clack. And what do I want? I want the average revenue. Right? Great. So yes, you do have a trend, but by doing the average of every single year, you will... Um, it's a simple way to do it. You have more advanced way, but you will uh, neutralize the, the trend by doing that. The only thing you have to be careful, you don't have the full year for this uh, data set. I only have one quarter for 2023. So what I recommend to do is to remove the last year because we don't have a full year. So we're going to add a filter. Up. I recommend always to use complete period. So I'm going to remove this one. Okay. Very good, my friend. I'm going to change the format of USD. Great. So this is my average. This is billions of dollars, not <laughs> thousands, of course. Uh, so you can see we have uh, an in average Q4, 59 billions, when Q1 is 40 and Q2 42, right? Uh, so it doesn't mean anything in value, right? Because today you are like, when you see the last quarters of Amazon, they are doing like 149, 127. So you need to change the scale. But what is the what is the way we're going to do it? I call it base hundred. You have multiple ways to call it. I like to use it seasonality base hundred, and we're going to just equal and divide this value. So don't do like this because you have this get pivot data. I don't like it. So you do this is t four t four divided by the sum. So this is t eight t eight f four right eighty six. Now we do have eighty six percent. Ta -da. So now you can see it's much easier to understand percentage because whatever you are doing, one trillion, one million, you can apply this percentage. For this, doesn't it's you can use it uh, for for the value directly. Then you can use some conditional formatting to make it nice for this and this, like. Et voila, my friends. And now we do have the seasonality. You can make a graph like this. You can check with my file. And uh, it's pretty cool to show that in your board of director. Okay, guys, this is a seasonality per quarter for Amazon. We have the graph. And now my boss say, you know what? We're going to do this is the revenue per, per year. And the big boss of Amazon say, you know what? Next year, we're going to do 600 billions, my friends. What is the forecast per quarter? Give me the forecast per quarter. So I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to tell you how to make the, the annual forecast in this specific tutorial. I have more workshop coming soon if you want to learn how to do this forecast. But to spread the forecast per quarter, it's very simple. You're going to just multiply your 600 billions times your base 100, 86%, 91, 97, and 126, right? So by doing that, you will spread your revenue and you will, you don't forget to divide by four the total revenue because it's per quarter. And by doing that, you will, uh, if you plan to do 600 billion, you will probably do something around 188 for quarter four. Okay, so this is an idea, a very simple approach for seasonality, but I feel this is good to start very simple <laughs> and you can do it in a more advanced way. So that's what we're going to do with the bike uh, cycle seasonality. In this one, we have a, we have a fake company <laughs> doing uh, these sales, but this is a, a pattern we had in 2020. It was a big peak of sales with the pandemic. Everyone wanted to buy a bike. And I can tell you that a lot of members contacting me because we had a lot of uh, shortages and after a lot of overstock because uh, everyone was overreacting with the with this trend and it was not a normal cycle. So what we're going to do in this one, I recommend you to, to try to do the same principle based on red not per quarter, but per month. You can pause this video. Of course, you have to use my Excel. And then I'm going to teach you how to do it. Okay, I hope you pause this video. <laughs> now let's do it together. Uh, we're going to do the same way. We're going to go to insert existing worksheets. Clack. Per month. 
revenue average. I'm going fast. I know I'm going fast sometimes. And I'm going to add the filter here. Why? Because now we do have this. So we could do the formula. So this is P4. P4. P4 divided by the total P16. P16. Great. So I have my average weight, base 100. Base 100. Ta -da -da. I'm going to do my conditional formatting. I like to keep it always visual. So we do have this, right? And you can see that we have a strong peak for June and uh, July. The problem is you have this, one of the question is, oh, but what, what if you have a, we have a very strange year that's 2020. It was kind of a mess, right? You don't want to, you don't have to include all uh, your historic data if you, if you think this, this was not a normal pattern. So what do you do? You just have to remove it. And it's very simple. You just select the years you want. If you feel like you don't have relevant history at the beginning, you can also remove few years. But what we're going to do, I'm going to do, I'm going to uncheck this one. And you can see my data are changing a bit. Basically, what I did, it was, it was the same like deleting the data. If uh, like I will go to this data set and say, you know what? I don't want 2020. Bye. I know it looks like much more natural. You could even say, oh, you know what? 2021 was not great as well, so you could also remove 2021. The more you have sales uh, historic, the better it is to calculate your seasonality uh, for that. It's up to you. But you see, I don't see a big, big change when I do that. So now you have this number. And by doing that, you will be able to once again generate if you have a like, this is your revenue per year and this is your next year forecast and the uh, the director of finance say, you know what, next year we're going to do 70 millions and you can spread this number using the base 100 seasonality. There is a few questions. I won't have time to, to go deeper into that. But if you have like not a clean data set and you're doing a lot of erratic numbers, you can smooth the value. So I recommend you to download my file if you want to see how I smooth my data if you have too much noise in your uh, in your data set. I also use this formula to see that, yes, this time we do have a 12 month cycle. And now in the next minutes, I'm going to tell you what are the limitations, what are the classic mistakes and challenge you can face using seasonality. So the first challenge is I don't have enough sales historics, for example. This is a classic challenge for companies. It's, but the more you have, the better you will be to uh, identify. Do your best to find <laughs> this uh, data set with your finance uh, uh, team. Maybe give them uh, a croissant. Uh, it was very useful for me as a strategy to get more data. Uh, also, how to deal with outliers, you know, this big uh, unexpected peak, you, you have to remove them basically. <laughs> so you have to do your best and uh, you have multiple methods for that. But do it at least with the graph to see if you have something uh, weird coming. Be also very careful the demand are not equal to the sales. It's better to create the seasonality with your true demand. If you have, for example, uh, three months out of stock, it's not the reality of your seasonality. So you can correct the curve, you can remove the, the wrong uh, period, but make sure that you have something as relevant and as close to the demand and not the sales. Uh, do you have to do it in value or quantity? I recommend to do it in value, to be honest, because uh, at the end we are selling uh, quantity times price. But if you have a very similar price uh, range between your products, you could also use quantity. What do you do if you don't have enough volumes? If you don't have enough volumes, and maybe it's because you don't have seasonality at all, or maybe it's because your group of products is too small. And this is the last question, which level of aggregation is the right one? I could talk about this one for hours and days. And this is a question I have a lot from my students from my online school. And at the end, the good level, um, you have three pillars for the level of aggregation. You have the location from your individual, your team member, your factory, your region. You have the product level. Do I need to have a seasonality per item, model, family, category, brand, or total? And per, per temporality, is it per day, per week, per month, per quarter, and per year? This is not an easy <laughs> question to answer. I will keep it very macro at the beginning. And the better you are improving your, your forecast and your seasonality uh, patterns, the deeper I will go into uh, low uh, granularity. But I will start, for example, at the total or brand level with your one site per month, 
to see if you uh, you can see um, specific patterns. At the end, my goal is really to help you to have a more accurate forecast and keep it simple. I know we do have a lot of uncertainty on this planet right now. Uh, we don't know what we're going to sell next, but you can always improve yourself. We, we are probably very far from the 100% of accuracy. And by giving you the right tools, the right method and the right communication, because this is not only about using SAP, Excel or Python. This is also having the right uh, mindset and communication with all your department to push you to the next step. So if you want to go further with me, I do have a lot of tutorials with forecasting and I'm creating a new workshop. I'm going to teach you how to improve your forecast accuracy in a very simple and automatic way. Thank you for watching. Leave me any comments or questions if you have. Give me a like and I see you very soon.